you for the Word of God. Thank you, Father, that the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name that we will speak and we will act upon the holy written Word of God. And I thank you, Father, we will see the results that we desire. In Jesus' name, amen. Mark chapter 4, verse 26 through 29. And holding your place there in the book of Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 through 9. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Come on in, sister. Good to see you. Hallelujah. Praise God. 26 verse of St. Mark. And he said, the Lord Jesus Christ is speaking. So is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day and the seed should spring and grow up he knoweth not how for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself first the blade then the ear after that the full corn in the ear but when the fruit is brought forth immediately he putteth in the sickle because the harvest is come. How many of you know there's a time to sow and there's a time for the harvest? Yeah. Amen. Now I want you to know that Jesus said, so is the kingdom of God. Yeah. There in that 26th verse, as if a man should cast seed into the ground. God does. Did you know that you plant seeds every day? Amen. Yeah. Every day you are planting something. You're either planting life or you're planting death. Yeah, Every day. With your words and with your actions. Amen. You are planting seeds every day. Now go with me to Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 through 9. Blessed be the name of the Lord God. Verse 7 of the 6th chapter of Galatians. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever, notice the word whatsoever. Notice that word. Let that word stand out. Life or death. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap. Life everlasting. Let us, the church, not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. Now I want to tell you this morning, my dear brother and sister, God doesn't pay up every first of the month. Are you hearing me? But sooner or later, payage comes up. Amen. Whether it be to the flesh or to the spirit. Whether it be life or death. Sooner or later, payday comes. But I want you to notice the scripture tells us, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. God has a season for you. Right. Now I don't know what, se what season you're in right now, but we're always in the season of sowing. Are you hearing me? Because now you might be reaping a harvest that you sowed the last season or the season before that. Are you hearing me this morning? What you planted yesterday with your mouth and with your actions, you reap today. Somebody says, I don't like the harvest that I received today. Well, change it. Sow something good. Sow life. Sow yeah. blessings. Yeah, right. How do you sow? With the words of your mouth. Yeah, right. Pull in, brother. Hallelujah. Praise God. With the words of your mouth and action. You know, the woman with the issue of blood, she sowed by words and action. Yeah, she said, if I may touch but the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Amen. Now, if she would have sowed those seeds and and would not have acted her faith, would she have reaped the harvest of healing? 
No. Action will defeat you or put you over. There has been people that stay in their seats when the power of God was present up here to heal, to deliver, but they sat in their seat. You don't receive from God sitting down. That's right. You receive from God by action. Amen. Amen. Come on. <clears throat> I want you to think about all the times, you know, Sister Judy testified. Six weeks ago, I believe it was, or seven weeks ago, she came up to the altar and Jesus healed her uh, gallbladder. I asked her this morning, have you had any problems with your gallbladder since we prayed? She says, not a thing. Now, what would have happened if she would have stayed in her seat? She wouldn't have received the healing. So many people miss out on the blessings of God because they don't get up and make a sacrifice. We, God is looking for a sacrifice today. Amen. You know, like Sister Carrie, we sung that song, We Bring the Sacrifice of Prayer. There's times you might not feel like praising God. Uh -huh. there's, there's times I might be in my bed, might want to be quiet, not say anything. I've got to make a sacrifice. I've got to tell the body, body, you're fixing to worship God. Yeah. And as I do that, not long after that, a few minutes, I'm feeling good. Yeah. You, God is looking for a sacrifice. For you. Are you here? Sister Tracy came up to the altar last week, I believe it was. She made a sacrifice and come, had a good report from the doctor about her Amen. 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 But see, God does not move when people sit in their seats. God is waiting for you to take that first step. When you take that first step, He meets you. The Bible says you draw nigh to God and He will draw nigh to you. A lot of people want God to just come ahead and do it all and, and God draw nigh to them. It doesn't work that way, my brother and sister. Amen? We're talking about sowing and reaping. Be not weary, 6th chapter 9 verse of Galatians. Let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we think not, there are people that were fixing to reap the blessings of God. Turn with me to the 14th chapter of Matthew. 14th chapter of Matthew. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are those that the blessings of God were about to overtake them. Are you hearing me this morning? But they fell back. They wearied. And so they didn't receive the blessing. Here's one here, the 14th chapter. I want you to look at verse 22 of Matthew chapter 14. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he has spent, sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone, but the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the water. Our master walks on the water. Our master sows seeds of life. Amen and blessings. When he speaks, he was a blessing to humanity. Amen? Hallelujah. I serve an awesome God. Mama was telling me about that demon she cast out of that young lady. She saw it in the hospital. And she said that thing come out. She was a little old lady. And, uh, and his life, I forgot how many doctors were holding her down, seven or eight. And Mama said she stopped. She says, come out of her in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. She said that thing came out and uh, reddish black looking, you know, about, I think she said three or four feet tall. And it looked at her and she says, I said, go in Jesus' name. And that thing took off. Now, they didn't see what she was seeing. But see, they couldn't tame that lady. You know, over there in the fifth chapter of uh, Mark, the bad man of Gadara, the Bible says no man could tame him. Always cutting himself. But, you know, when, when people are oppressed of devils, they do squirrely and crazy things. The devil is, oh, thank you, Lord. The devil is crazy, and he'll make people crazy. Yes. Amen. Are you 
Everybody hearing me? But Jesus is the life giver. You know him, you'll know peace. Yeah. If you don't know Jesus, you won't never know peace. Come on. Amen? Jesus is the Prince of Peace. <coughs> Hallelujah. Well, Jesus is a mighty God. He's walking on the water here. Look at verse 26. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear, but straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Sister Jean mentioned that this morning. About whenever Jesus comes on the scene, he never comes with a message of fear. Right. He always says, Be not afraid, Amen. but be of good courage. Amen. When Jesus comes on the scene, be of good courage. It might look like all hell's coming against you from every side, from the north, south, east, and west. But when Jesus steps on the scene, everything's fixing to change. Yes. Amen. Praise his holy name both now and forevermore. And Peter answered him in verse 28. And Peter answered him and says, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, see, he had action, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. And when he saw the wind boisterous, now listen, he's having a miracle. Look at that 29th verse. He walked on the water to go to Jesus. That 29th verse lets me know that Peter walked on the water. He actually was walking on water. The scripture tells us. But did you know, because he wearied, he didn't receive the full reward? The Bible says, let us not be weary in well-doing for a due season. God has a season of blessings for you, but he's watching you. He's watching you. He wants to see if you're going to pass his test. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a two-fold application there. We don't want to be weary in our Christian walk because we want to reap heaven. Right. Amen? I want to enter, when I put off this tabernacle one day, I'm going to step through the gates of the city, Amen. that eternal city where there's everlasting peace and I'll see my Lord and my Savior, the Son of the living God who gave Himself for me. And I want to hear Christ say, my Lord and my Savior, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You didn't turn to your left or to your right. You didn't compromise my word. You stayed faithful to the end. That's what I want to hear, amen? I don't want to ever hear the words. I miss it a lot in life. And you know, and that's one thing that I don't want to miss it in when it comes to my eternal salvation. Amen. Praise His holy name. Well, the miraculous is working in Peter's life. We can, the Bible tells us there in verse 29, he walked on the water to go to Jesus, but it was never consummated. It never came to completion. Because he wearied. Yeah, right. Look at verse 30. And when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, listen to this. O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying of a truth, thou the Son of God. Now I want you to notice something. Because Jesus was there in the flesh, he was able to catch him. Only because he was in the flesh. Only. If he wouldn't have been there in the flesh, he would have sunk. Why are you hearing it this morning? Be not weary in well-doing. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not. I've seen over the years, and I know you have too, my brother and sister, but you got to remember there's more applications to that verse than just one. Yeah. I mean, I might climb up a, a, up the nice mountain and see a beautiful scenery. Well, if I climb up on the other side of that mountain, I'm not going to see the same scenery that I did the first time. I'm going to see a different scenery, yet the same mountain. Amen? Amen? You can take this verse of Scripture over there in Galatians and 
And there's many truths to it, just like we don't want to weary in our walk with Jesus because we want to go to heaven. Amen? And also you can take the truth to it about doubting. And also you can take the truth to it. You remember last Sunday night? That's pretty powerful. I didn't know I was going to preach that. That's the Holy Ghost. About speak to your mountain. If you don't speak to your mountain, oh, thank you, Lord. What are you doing? You're sowing seeds when you speak to your mountain. If you, if you get weary and say, I've been doing this for three months. Now nothing's changed. There's another view of it. Be not weary and well doing. For in due season, God has a season for you. You remember me telling you about that lady? Uh, was it last Sunday night or Wednesday? I told you about that lady that had a uh, deformed child. I heard a minister talk about for three years. She looked at her child and she said, she, she spoke to that child. That was her mountain in her life. For three years, she was speaking to that child. Health, strength. No, to be normal in the name of Jesus. After three years, she was laying down. All of a sudden, she heard some commotion and where the child's room was and in there, he was healed. Jesus came and healed him while he was asleep or, or playing. Jesus is the healer. Amen. But that woman didn't wear it. What about if she would have done that for two years? God, I've been doing this for two years. Hey, you mean to tell me I believe that preacher? He told me to speak to my mountain, Lord. Here I am. Look at me. I should have known better. I just so gullible. Well, Jesus said, speak to you, man. Yeah. Amen. Right. Amen. I just quote Jesus. The woman didn't weary. She didn't faint. She stayed with the word of God. And guess what happened after three years? The power of God hit that child Lord. and completely healed. Yeah. 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 You want me to tell you why a lot of people don't see God's power? They give up. Yeah. Right. They give up. The devil wins. Let me tell you, I'll say this again and I'll, and I'll say it again to you. I wish Christians were as persistent as the devil was. In, excuse me. As the devil is. That devil don't give up. It's amazing how Christians will lay down. Poor old me. Oh, what am I going to do now? Well, Jesus has given you authority. And the devil's beating you up because you're not exercising authority over him with the word of God. You need to sow some seed. And the seed to sow is God's Word. Amen. But we see right here, this is a good example that Peter wearied because he looked at the wind boisterous. What causes you and I to weary? We look. We feel. We see as Peter did. And all of a sudden, God's power does not come to completion in our lives because we get back into this thing called the flesh. Well, Brother Dennis... I just don't feel like God heard me. Yeah, well, if you step out of that flesh and step into faith, you'll see answers. That's right. Amen. Amen. When you are prayed for down here and you don't feel, now some people say, I felt the warmth go into me. Some people say, I didn't feel nothing. Come on. Whether you feel anything yeah. or not, if you'll believe, the yeah. answer is yes. Yes. Because I'm not doing it. I'm not running the show. Christ is. And if I was a healer, I'd heal everybody I lay hands on. And that's why some are healed and some are not. God let the people know, hey, I'm running this and not this. And also, they could have unforgiveness and animosity and ill will and hatred. Or God could be talking to them about something and not actually rebelling in their heart. Not listening to the Holy Ghost. And God said, you are not getting it. lives in me. Amen. See, some people say, but I know somebody that didn't get a healing. Well, only God knows why. That's right. That's right. I mean, are they believing? Are they loving people? Are they forgiving people? Are they obeying God? If God is speaking to them, you know y'all heard me tell about the guy that worked on oil field. I think I about wore that out. But still, God was speaking to him to give, to give his tithes and he wouldn't do it. Well, he couldn't receive a healing for ulcers of the stomach until he obeyed the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Amen? We have to obey. And so Peter here was looking. And while he looked, because what he looked or what he heard, he wearied. And he got his eyes off Jesus 
In other words, when Jesus said, he said, Peter said, Lord, if it be you, can I come walk on the water with you? You know, in English terms? Yeah. Sure, come on. He started acting on the word of God. Amen. If Jesus would have never said, come on or come, he couldn't act on that word. Amen. But see, he's acting on the word of God. When you act on the word of God, you will see results too. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. If you act on the word of God, you'll be a water walker. Right. Amen. What are water walkers? Those that walk on the word of God and they have, even though they see everything coming against them, they're walking on the word of God. The only thing they have under their feet is God's word. That's the only thing they have under their feet. It might, they might have heard a report over here. Oh, thank you, Lord, for bringing that to me. And a report over here. But yet, they're walking on the word. They got nothing right. under their feet but the word of God. Amen. Sherry was diagnosed as a young child, well, as a teenager. Yeah, as a young adult, about 21. Oh, 21, 22, with the skin disease of psoriasis. Yep. Uh, we were kind of psoriasis, and he said, we all just Listen to this. The doctor told her, diagnosed her skin with, she can't lay out in the sun. Let me tell you, she takes the hottest showers. I can tell you. <laughs> Anyway, okay. the doctor spoke that over her. Yes. Spoke it. What did you tell him? I've got to get it to me. I don't have that. I've never had that. Okay. He was trying to sow seeds of death. You came back, even though it was the doctor, and you said, No, I don't have that. Yeah, and you told him, I'll never have it. I've never seen a psoriasis on her, and we've been married over 22 years. No. Now, here's where people miss it at. Listen to me, church. The doctor spoke that. Brother Dennis and... <laughs> here's where some Christians miss it. They don't speak back the word. Sure, he spoke back the word. No, I don't have that. I have beautiful skin. You know that slapped the devil right in the face. He couldn't stand that. Here's where people miss it. They go to the doctor. They get diagnosed. Just like I told you about that kid. I think he was 12. Might have been 11 or 13. I forgot. But anyway, the doctor comes up to the parents, kind of similar to your story, and they tell the parents, your child has leukemia. And the doctor's looking at the parents, and the, he said, did you not hear what I said? Because he didn't say, sit, excuse me, see no expression on their face. And they said, thank you. They went in there to their child. Now the child's fixing to do some so with them. They said, son, I want you to quote Matthew 8, 16, and 17 all night long. Every waking moment, you quote the word of God. You see why the word doesn't work for some people? They don't quote the word. They quote what the doctor. We're not against doctors. I'm not against God. But Jesus is greater. Yes. And Jesus, oh, thank you, Lord. And the Bible says in Matthew 18, 19, that if two of you on earth shall agree as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done. Yes. You better be careful about who you agree with. Yes. And if the doctor says this is what you have and this is what needs to be done, and you say, okay, and you agree with him, guess what the devil's going to do? You just bound, you, open, you just sealed your faith with your believing and with your words. Yeah. Um, I preach the truth. Come on. Yeah. Are you hearing me? You can lose out if you quit walking on the word. You keep looking. You got something going on in your body? Lay your hands on your body and speak to it. All right. All right. Speak to your mouth. Yes. You hear me? You got something that you can't break. You lay your hands on your body. You say addiction, go in Jesus' name. Be thou removed, mountain of addiction, and be thou cast into the sea in the name of Jesus. You got a sickness? You want to speak over your heart? I speak over my heart just about every day. I call it the blockage. I speak over my arteries. I'm just telling you some things I do. I lay my hands on my body and on my heart. Just about every day. Maybe not did that this morning. Because we was in a hurry. 
But every day I'll lay my hands on my honor, well, on my body, on my heart, and I'll say, and I'll say, thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus for strong, for a perfect and healthy and strong heart and arteries. Thank you, Lord. And then I'll speak to the mountain. I say, I resist and rebuke blockage in the arteries and in the heart. I resist and rebuke blockage in the arteries and the heart. Then I'll speak over my prostate. Then I'll, uh, uh, well, when I go once a year for that anyway, praise God. Good reports, amen. Never had a bad one. But, uh, but I believe in speaking the word, amen. Praise God. And I'll speak the word over my stomach. My bones. What am I doing? I'm sowing and speaking life. Yes. So many people say, I've got this. Oh, uh -huh. Ain't no use me laying hands on you. That's what I believe you got. So many people, you know, you heard me tell about the fellow that's, uh, and this is very good repetition right here. When you didn't agree with that doctor, you never had it. Are you hearing me? When the doctor tells you something, thank him for his diagnosis and then get the word after it. All right. Amen? Get the word after it. Right. Right. Yes. I'm sure you're glad I'm going to heaven. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I, don't, I, I like to go to a place that's comfortable. Yeah. Amen. I don't want to go to a place that's not comfortable. That's full of torment day and night forever and ever and ever. I don't want to go to that place. Amen. Thank God, I like to be comfortable. And you're going to be comfortable in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Jesus is wonderful. Well, this man was good health, went into a call of Brother Jim three weeks before he was 40. Three weeks, man, before he was 40, he slipped into a coma. Doctors are in there running tests, can't find him. He sowed the wrong seeds. Because whether you sow death or whether you sow life, remember the flesh and the spirit we just read, 7th through the ninth verse of 6th chapter of Galatians? Some of you came in a little late. He that sows to the flesh shall what of the flesh reap corruption, but he that sows to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. This man, he didn't know it, but it's a spiritual law that works for everyone. Every, that's why it says whatsoever. And that said at first, whatsoever a man sows. He went into a call and doctors are like, I can't find nothing wrong with this man. He's in good health. Why did he slip into a coma? Well, his brother came in. And the minister came in. He says, Lord, and he's talking to the Lord like he carries a conversation with everyone else. And you should because he lives in you. Amen. Amen. How do you think I get things sometimes? He brings it up like a shot. Like right? somebody shoots a bullet, it comes up that quick. And I take it and throw it out there to you. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Jesus said the Holy Ghost, He will bring all things to your remembrance. Yes. Yes. Whatsoever I said unto you. Amen. Yes. Thank God He's in there. Yes. Amen. Yes. And, and all of a sudden, the minister says, Lord, I believe I'll just rebuke this man and command it to leave him. It's of the enemy anyway. And the Lord spoke to him, and I got it right from the minister, heard him say it. He said the Lord spoke to him, and listen to this. Here's what the Lord told him. No, don't do it. Spiritual laws were put in motion long ago that cannot be reversed at this time. Why? He's the one that put them in motion. He's the one that has to reverse them. See why prayer would work for his case? We was talking about that earlier. He closed the door to prayer when he went to a coma. Prayer is right. But prayer don't work for everyone because there's a reason why. And he says, well, I didn't know what the Lord was talking about. Listen to this. The Lord spoke to him and said, spiritual laws were put in motion long ago that cannot be reversed at this time. Leave him alone and let him come on home. His spirit will be better off with me. And he didn't minister to him. At 39 years of age, he's going to be 40. Would have made for him. And so his brother comes in. And his brother started talking. And he says, you know, ever since we were teenagers, he always said, I'll never live to see 40. He said we'd be horse playing, having fun as brothers, and all of a sudden we'd get down to some serious talk. 
And he looked at him seriously. He said, you know, I don't believe I'll ever live to see 40. Three weeks before his 40, he died. Couldn't find nothing wrong with him. It said, that's why the Lord said spiritual laws were put in motion long ago. That cannot be reversed. You better watch what you say. Because the Bible says in Proverbs 18, 21, I believe it is. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Hey, look, if you want to speak death, if you want to speak the devil's language, you want to speak bondage, you want God will let you do it. <coughs> but I'm not going to do it. Amen. I'm going to speak life. Are you hearing me? I'm going to lay my hands on my body and I'm going to prophesy over my body. Amen. 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 I remember Brother Irwin, his mother, would always say, she said, son, pray for me. I believe I'm coming down with cancer. He said, Mom, quit saying that. You know, she kept on saying that. She didn't quit it and she came down with cancer. Yeah. You better watch what you say. You could listen. I would rather cuss than I would to say that. Yeah. Now, I won't do neither one of them. You understand? <laughs> but if you gave me the option, I'd rather do that than I would to speak death. Oh, See, people never think about that. I remember one time I was in school, and I said something in there trying to get their attention, but I wonder if they all got it. Because there was people in class there, and I spoke up, and we were talking about things, some sin and so on. And I told them I'd rather smoke a cigarette in the class out loud, or dip a dip of snuff, and I wouldn't be worried. Some of them got it, he got it, but I don't know. I think it went like this over the summer. <laughs> Why? I didn't want my peace disturbed. Now, many Christians look like, what? You think you're trying to smoke death and worry? Because they're so used to worry. No, I'm not going to start worrying. That's a bigger sin. That opens the door for the devil. Worry has put people in the institution, the mental institution. And I don't like for my peace to be disturbed. When I lay down, I want to sleep good. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Don't be a worrier. What? It opens the door for the devil. Yeah. You know, over there in 1 Peter 5, 7, I believe it is, it says, casting all your care upon him because he cared for you. The 8th verse says, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary the devil. Yeah. That wasn't written in chapter and verse. Worry will open the door for the devil. When the devil comes in and you begin to worry, he says, I got you. I got your mind out of peace. I got you. I know what I know what triggers you. I know how to get to you. I know what triggers you. You're starting to worry. That's why when you say, I'm not going to worry a week about it. Are you here? The devil wants to steal your peace. He wants to steal your health. One way it does it is through worry. Amen? Amen? Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now go with me. You're there in Matthew. Go to Mark chapter 4 again. Mark chapter 4. Man, time flies by when you're having fun. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Man, this is fun serving Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen? Give the devil a cry, kick. Amen? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. We got, we got rid of him earlier, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You remember when we all said, go in the name of Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. Every one of us in here, that's powerful. Yeah. I can't believe what we are saying. I think God is good. Yeah. Anyway, look there at 35, Mark chapter 4, verse 35. And the same day when the evening was come, he saith unto them, let us pass over to the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they... They took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm. Sounds to me like a tornado or a hurricane. Or of wind. And, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow, and they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose, and what did he do? Jesus talked to the wind, come on, man. And rebuked the wind, 
and said unto the sea, you kidding me, Dennis? <laughs> your Lord and Savior. Yeah. Now look at this. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said, and said, and said, what did the man always say? I'll never live to see 40. What are you saying? What are you sowing? And said unto the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Right. There, oh, thank you, Lord. That's good. There never would have been a great calm and a peace until he said it. Amen. Amen. What are you sowing into your life? When hands are laid on you and you can still have symptoms just lingering, all they are, the devil's trying to steal, keep, steal your faith. If, if you have hands laid on you and you're right with Jesus and you're doing what you know to do, and you have hands laid on you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and, and maybe you might be healed instantly. Some are. But if you're not healed instantly and you still have symptoms lingering, are you saying, according to the word of God, it says in James chapter 5, you know, the prayer of faith shall save the sick or shall heal the sick. Thank you, Father. I believe that when hands was laid on me in the name of Jesus yes. Christ, that sickness and devil left. My body is recovering according to the 16th chapter of Mark. I'm healed. I'm strong. I'm healthy. Mountain of sickness. Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea in the name of Jesus. Are you speaking to your mouth or do you give up? The devil wants you to give up. The devil wants you. I like something missy. When she needed healing for something one time, she wouldn't even say the word. Words are powerful. They're containers. They contain health. They contain fear. They contain believing. They contain strength. What are you speaking? Are you poisoning your life? James says that the tongue is full of deadly poison. So many people, they poison their lives. They poison their future like that young man did at 39 when he said, I'll never live to see 40. People say, I'll never amount to anything. Oh, yep, that's what the devil, and the devil's like, yes, keep saying it because I'm going to bind you with your own words. Yeah. Whatever a man sows, be not deceived. Many people are deceived. Uh, yes. I preached this message and people look, oh, ain't that a sweet message? That was good, Brother Dennis. I like that message. And then they go out there and talk like the devil in the world. Yeah. It went through here and went. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Amen. Proverbs 6 2 says, I are snared with the words of your mouth. Yeah. In other words, you're taken captive with your own words. The moment you said you could not, that rose up like a yeah. giant. But the moment you said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, victory is on its way. Amen. Amen. What are you sowing? Because get this, there's a harvest coming. There's always a harvest coming. There's a harvest coming of defeat or failure, or there's a harvest coming of the blessings of God. I had a man speak to me, and I didn't really know what it was. I had to look it up in the... Uh, in the dictionary, because I'm not so educated as some people are, but thank God, God, I take someone that's not so educated and turn the world upside down like an apostle. He gets the credit. That's right. He gets the credit. I didn't call myself, but thank God I love working for Jesus. He's my boss. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right. And I had, had I went to a prophetic meeting, and uh, you got to be careful some of them, you know. I mean, there's some people out there that, to, that are fake, but that doesn't do away with the genuine. You don't believe that? Read the book of Acts about the prophets. Right. And the Bible says in Ephesians, and God has set some in the church, first apostles, then prophets. And then it talks about uh, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, the fivefold ministry. Yeah. But a lot of the church only recognize the evangelist and the pastor and the teacher, and then they throw the apostle and the prophet away. And when they come in town and they start saying things, they're like, woo hoo, woo hoo, woo hoo. <laughs> Let's get away from there. Let's go go back down there to that church again. <laughs> Hello? Why? They bring forth revelation by the Spirit of God as they stand in another office. Amen. Right. Amen? 
You know, I had a brother that comes to this church tell me about one of his cousins. I think he's a distant cousin. He was coming here. Listen to this. This is sad. He was being blessed. Jesus was working in his life. And y'all would know him if I called his name out. Some of you would. And all of a sudden, his mother got mad because he was coming down here to Cornerstone Family Worship Center. Look what Jesus was doing in a man's life. You should rejoice. Glory to God, son. Keep going to that church. I'm seeing a change in you. Jesus is showing up. Glory. Glory. Now he's back on drugs. The mother should have applauded him. His life was changing. Sad, isn't it? Yes. I don't know about you, but if I need a deliverance, I know where I'm headed to. Yes. If I need a healing, I know where I'm headed to. And I'm not here to speak this very of other denominations. You know, we love them, but I'm going to the church that believes out, believes in the miraculous. Yes. Yes. I'm going down to the church that believes in casting out devils and deliverance yes. and believes in healings. Yes. I'm sure not going down to the church that don't believe in it. Amen. 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 If you did that, you wouldn't have been healed for seven weeks now, would you? Right. Some of you didn't hear your testimony. Jesus healed her down here instantly seven weeks ago. Yes. And I asked her this morning. Hallelujah. We serve a risen. Now, that's one of them he heals instantly. You are one. There are some. But now, just because you're not healed instantly doesn't mean Jesus said no. If you keep the switch of faith on and begin to believe, bless God, the healing's already started in your body the moment you begin to believe. Amen. But sometimes it's not as quick as other times. Like I said before, I'll tell you again, he's running the show, not I. I don't run it. Jesus runs it. Amen. Amen. And I love him so. Amen. Join it. I do pretty good. <laughs> Amen. Well, Jesus rebuked the wind and the sea. What are you rebuking? Are you speaking life over your body or are you predicting your future with your words? Are you sowing defeat? Are you sowing death? Or are you sowing life? You can take any person out of the gutter. Someone that's a nobody, teach them the Word of God, and if they will act upon it, they will become successful. And then you can take someone that's successful, that was maybe born into a family that, that from genius, and if they begin to talk, defeat, failure, and death, they will end up on that road. Amen. I want to talk this. I want to talk the Word of God. My, my dear brothers and sisters, I want to tell you this morning, be not weary in well-doing. Be not weary in well-doing. For in due season, God has a season for you. But God, listen, He can't bring that season about if you talk opposite from the Word. If He says, child, you can do all things through me. And you say, I can't do nothing right. You're stopping God from moving because you're speaking opposite from the Bible. See, we want a miracle, but we got to speak the Word and believe the Word. We go, see, acting on the Word is water walkers because you don't have nothing under you except the naked Word of God. Yeah. Amen? Even though you've got things coming from you from every side, you said, I've got God's Word. That's all I need. And when God sees that and you speak that, your future, you're predicting it. You're sowing seeds today that you're going to reap a harvest of blessings tomorrow. Are you hearing me? It's true. In the beginning, God said, and everything that happened, I'll give you another revelation because God wanted to hear this one. Listen to this. Everything that God spoke in the Old Testament, everything that He sowed through a prophet yeah. happened later. Yeah. Yeah. A virgin shall be with the child. Right. Men talked about Christ, prophesied Christ, prophesied a lot of things. Then they, they never came to pass first. They were always spoken first. God still does it today. And He says, my people, you do the same thing. Amen? Amen. Amen. What are you speaking? You have a brother in this. I've been saying that for a year now. Don't wear it out. Because your ass is just right around the corner. Yes. That's right. Amen. All the things that God has done in your life, think about you that were in here that was educated. Did you speak to it? 
Some of the greatest things that God did in my life, I spoke faith. I spoke to them. I rebuked them. Or no matter what it was, I spoke. And then the answer came. Yeah. Yeah. Reason why the answer is delayed and don't come sometimes, because we speak can't. I've been like this. It won't never happen. I'll never see it. Y'all pray for me. It, all it does is gets worse and worse. I'm just wondering what will happen next. Uh, you know, all these things these people say and the little seeds that's going out yeah. all the time. Everything bad comes my way. And the devil's on the background saying, yes, I'm using that. And then you speak another word. Because Jesus said the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and Lot, what do you think your words are? Yeah. If they're coming from a spirit. The devil will snatch it and say, I'm using this against you. And then you will say, and he will use that on your own word. Thou art snared, according to Proverbs 6 2. Thou art taken captive with your own words. Y'all be speaking the word of God. Yeah. yeah, but Brother Dennis, but let me tell you what the doctor told me. Uh huh. Now, what is, whose report are you going to believe according to the 53rd chapter of Isaiah? Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, says, whose report will you believe? The report of the Lord. We shall believe the report of the Lord. What, and you know that little child that had leukemia? Was healed. His confession of God's Word drove that sickness out. But his parents went in there and said, Son, I want you to pull the Word of God. They didn't accept what the doctor said, just like Sherry didn't accept it. So many people will accept the word of a man or, a, or what the man says to them. And it might, the devil, listen, symptoms, the devil can bring symptoms. I've had symptoms over my body through the years everywhere. I almost said earlier, well, we're saying there's something devil good. I didn't want to, well, y'all are probably used to me by now. I probably wouldn't freak none of you out. Right? Because the devil has put some, some symptoms on me, and I just wanted to say, you know, God, in Jesus' name, I ain't putting up with you this morning. you got to know how to talk to the devil. Yeah. you got to know that he's defeated. Yeah. So when you have symptoms, listen to me. I'm fixing to close it down. Listen to me. I'm going to teach you something very valuable. When you have symptoms in your body, or maybe you've got something going on in your body now, speak to it command it to leave in the name of Jesus. If you've got something going on, lay your hand on your heart and say, my heart is strong and healthy. I won't take no for an answer. Even though it starts to mess up. Yeah. You're not walking. You're walking by faith. The Word of God says this. Yeah. In Jesus' name, I have a strong and healthy heart. In Jesus' name, my body is strong and healthy. In Jesus' name, the parts of my body are strong and healthy. I command all sickness and deformity to go. In Jesus' name, you can command that to leave your yes. body in the name of Jesus. Yes. Why? You are to reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Yes. So many of us don't reign because we go to these churches that don't preach the truth of God's Word. And they're scared to preach it. It's sad to say there's... And then, and, and it, really, it's not the church. It's the ministers to blame. Amen. Are you hearing me? Because if the ministers would preach the Word of God like it's supposed to be preached, their congregation would be schooled in the Word of God. At 12 years old, Jesus went to church. Right. Setting the example to people say, Hey, look, you need to be in church at 12. Yeah, right. Amen. And then his mom and daddy was looking for him three days past. Where's Jesus? And they got fretted. And then they found him in the temple, debating with the doctors of the law. And what did Jesus say? I must be about my father's business. Yes. Amen? Amen. Let's all stand.